Hello everyone and thank you again for joining me today. I am Dina Cotter, nutrition consultant and if you remember last week we discussed about osteoporosis and one of the factors involved is having a low urinary pH, as, you know, which is what we call acidosis. Today I'd like to discuss how we can improve our urinary pH because not only does it is it really important for preventing osteoporosis and treating osteoporosis, but it also plays a huge factor in the development of degenerative diseases like cancer, um, allergies, autoimmune diseases, and so on. So please join me as we go forward to look at some of the factors both in diet and lifestyle that can help. So why is urinary pH important? What I really would like to do is tell you that many of you are not getting the information from the healthcare field about how critical our urinary pH is in maintaining health and also in improving health. For instance, we looked at last time osteoporosis and the fact that there is significant loss of bone and minerals from bone when the urinary pH is low. Well, did you know that in the Western world, particularly in the U.S., in Germany, Sweden, where the intake of animal protein is so high and it's not balanced with fruits and vegetables, that there is 40 times more hip fractures than there is, in, for instance, in Thailand, where the diet is much richer in fruits and veggies. So we do know that the urinary pH is a critical factor, not only for bone health, but also for preventing degenerative diseases like cancer. Cancer could simply be, for some people, a lack of adequate mineral reserves in the body. We also know that arthritis has a significant relationship with lack of minerals as well. So these are some examples of degenerative diseases that we can prevent in our world if we were eating a balanced diet. And then finally, vitamin D. We cannot absorb vitamin D if our urinary pH is low. There is new research indicating that vitamin D absorption is much greater if there is adequate uh, a balance between the minerals in the body and if you have a better urinary pH. So how do we measure urinary pH? Remember from our last session, I mentioned that 6.4 to 7 is the optimal range, and that's the range that I do recommend for my clients. Um, I do prefer people, though, to attain the 7.0 pH, and many of you have asked, well, how do you measure urinary pH? It's very important that you purchase pH strips, and what you do is you measure the first morning urine, um, and you do that in a cup, a clean cup and make sure that it's the first morning you're in before you've eaten or drunk anything. The pH strips can be purchased either online or from your local pharmacy. Now that you've tested your urinary pH and I'm sure like the majority of people in our Western culture you probably are acidic. So let's take a look at the factors affecting our urinary pH. Some of them you do have control over and some of them you may not have as much control, but let's focus on those that you can have control over. So the first one, of course, is our mood. If you find that you're a person that gets easily moody, irritable, angry, fearful, try and do exercise that will help relieve that mood and prevent you from changing your urinary pH. So uh, exercises like yoga, deep breathing, relaxation, listening to soft music, that's something you can do. Environmental factors like pesticides and herbicides, uh, tobacco smoke, pollution, the air we breathe sometimes, that may not always be under your control. But for those of you who eat out often in restaurants, try and choose restaurants that offer organically raised and organically grown food. That's one thing you can control. And finally, let's take a look at our food. How can we change the food we eat to improve our urinary pH? The majority of us tend to eat far too much of the following. Meat, poultry, fish, cheeses, carbonated beverages, alcohol, sugar, cereals, and so on. And these are the foods that, in, that lower our urinary pH and make us more acidic. 
So the foods that actually will improve and balance that are more fruits and vegetables in the diet. Remember, always buy organic. Um, high quality oils, particularly olive oil, make sure it's extra virgin, first cold pressed, organic. Um, also fish oils, but high quality fish oils. Nothing with tuna oil in it. Nothing extracted from salmon. So make sure you check that. Also, we do need to increase our intake of water too. Um, to increase, staying hydrated helps to improve the balance of our urinary pH. Um, minimizing sugar in the diet. Increasing um, our intake of eggs as opposed to the other types of animal protein. Nuts and seeds. Uh, sprouted flax is a very go uh, good source of an alkalizing seed and very beneficial to overall health. And of course, herbal tea is very beneficial. Green tea is um, more, slightly more alkaline and is much better than black tea. Black tea, in fact, um, can increase acidity in, in, the, in the urine. So focus on herbal teas, uh, green tea is very important as well. And those of you who do consume dairy, yogurt ha and kefir have a more alkalizing effect on the body as compared to cheese. Uh, legumes, for instance, beans, um, those are some examples that you can consume. Uh, black beans, cannellini beans, navy beans, those are some good examples of healthy beans. So by eating the majority of foods that are more alkalizing, you'll find this will make a significant difference on helping to balance your urinary pH. Make sure you include these foods at every meal of the day. So let me help you with making better choices and improving the alkalinity in your diet. Um, so here are some suggestions. Instead of using regular table salt from the grocery store, get sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. Uh, rather than drinking coffee, switch over to green tea, which is more alkaline. Instead of having white vinegar in your salad dressings, switch over to apple cider vinegar. And ice cream could be replaced by frozen yogurt. Rather than eating beef, go for venison or a similar wild game. Uh, barley and white rice are extremely acidic, so choose quinoa, which is a very versatile grain, light in taste and also very easy to cook. Rather than eating tons of those baby carrots, go for turnips instead. And Swiss chard is much better being replaced by kale. Lemon and lime are both alkaline, but lime is actually more alkaline than lemon. And cranberries are very acidic, so switch over to raspberries instead, or blueberries. Walnut, hazelnuts, and Brazil nuts are very acidic nuts, so we want to go with almond instead. Rather than eating white potatoes, go for sweet potatoes. And tomatoes are much better uh, being switched over to avocados instead. For a more complete list of acid and alkaline foods, follow the website below and you'll see we have a nice chart of all the foods. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for joining me today and I look forward to being with you again. Thank you.